okay uh a very good afternoon to all of you and uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, dr kishore patwardhan of ayurved network bhu for uh, providing me a platform and an opportunity to share uh, my views and experiences related to research perspectives in ayurveda uh, the present uh, clinical scenario and the present uh, covid 19 uh, pandemic has thrown the entire medical fraternity including ayurveda into a lot of challenges and uh, as all of you are aware we have been uh, seeing a lot of publications being uh, shared in the media and uh, across journals and a few questions have been asked regarding the validity of research claims especially related to ayurvedic studies and uh, just to give a background i have been teaching research for the past 20 years and at the outset you know again i would like to thank uh, my teacher uh, professor uh, b ravi shankar sir who initiated us into the process of research and the thought process that goes into research which started way back when we were uh, doing our uh, post graduate studies at ipgt r and a in jamnagar so since then you know after completing of my post graduate studies i have been uh, teaching research at various colleges for the post graduate uh, studies and uh, i have been learning a lot of things since then what i have seen and what i have experienced in the past 20 years is that there are some lacunes in our approach to Ayur ayurvedic research and this is what we need to address i have been using a lot of platforms to raise this issue i have been talking to different uh, forums uh, different seminars to a lot of students i keep encouraging them and motivating them to you know think on these aspects because this is a highly scientific era and uh, this is a highly technical and a most amazing uh, you know subject if you really try to understand what it means so i thought why not use this Uh, myself and dr kishore we were discussing this for i think uh, for quite some time now maybe about 2 months since the lockdown started and uh, since the first lockdown started i have been regularly taking uh, research updates on covid-19 for the post graduate scholars of our uh, college as well as uh, some other interested uh, people who jo used to join me so it was a wonderful thing you know learning uh, the new things because this is a new disease how newer and newer findings come out in the Uh, public domain and what do we make out of them and how ayurveda has to be uh, integrated or adopted that remains a challenge so with that perspective and background uh, we were discussing and then uh, maybe because of certain time constraints and other commitments we were not able to uh, put this thing together at a earlier date but today we were lucky enough to find a slot open for me to share my aspects and you know, share my experiences and thoughts Uh, what i will be taking you through today is the you know uh, a few basic concepts of research and i would like to highlight as i go on and as i will keep on talking what is it that we are not doing in ayurveda you know what research is what research should actually be and what is it that we are missing in ayurveda and how we can rectify that and that's why i thought that this becomes a apt topic uh, to say need for reforms in ayurveda research perspective it is very high time that we start thinking about this process and get our act together because the entire world is looking at uh, traditional systems of medicine be it china be it you know uh, vietnam be it uh, you know indonesia malaysia sri lanka india so many of the cultures across the world they have their own traditional medicines and they are all looking for answers but the most important thing is you know we may we may not like those questions when people ask us that is it scientific do we have any data you know all these kind of questions are being asked and from an ayurvedic perspective we always get people questioning back to them are saying oh did you have research you know do you have any cure for uh, covid-19 in uh, allopathy you are also doing trial and error so, so we we try to put the onus back on them but i think somewhere in between the lines there is something that we are missing and what is that something is what i would like to take you across today so my topic today is need for reforms in ayurveda research perspectives and uh, i'll start my presentation now 
so what is the purpose of research in health sciences you know this is very important for us to understand we have been studying this as a subject in post graduate studies and now it has been introduced at the ug undergraduate level in the fourth year bms as a 50 marks examination but i am sure that all of you will agree with me when i say this is just taught as another topic without any passion you know without any motivation on the part of the teachers as well as the students and they just learn it as a topic to pass the exam but what is the main purpose of research you know this is a very highly passionate area not everyone can become a research scholar not everyone can really understand so you need really dedicated people in this area to get across the message so what is important is establish the extent of occurrence of chance of health events you know ayurveda we have been studying you know there is a huge history of 5000 years the very avatarana of ayurveda was because of vignabhuta yada rogaha pradurbhute sharirina that is when diseases started occurring they wanted to find out why the diseases are occurring what is the remedy for that and that is what it is establish the extent of occurrence of chance of health events no normally occurrence of event will be as though they are occurring in nature and not by chance you know we we can see like this pandemic it just appears that as though it is in nature corona viruses are spread out throughout the nature but there was some chance there was some event which led and still we are not able to find out you know let us not argue about who you know uh, whether the chinese did it whether it got leaked because there are lots of uh, you know con- you know contradicting uh, reports so what we have to really understand is whether the disease that we are presented in the clinical scenario is it by chance or are they real diseases this is a very beautiful concept which is very clearly explained in ayurveda is you know vayo aho ratri bhuktante te madhyadega kramat what does it mean it means that the dosha undergo the variations fluctuations throughout the day is that a disease that is a chance occurrence it's not a real you know it's it does not cause symptoms when it starts causing symptoms then you have to consider it as a real which means that there is some cause so undertaken what is the purpose of research it is undertaken on events occurring on an individual or group basis have we ever done these kind of studies have we ever tried to know find out whether the events which are happening in the society surrounding us are they occurring on an individual level or on a group basis you know we we ask our students to uh, find out the prakriti as a part of their sharira kriya practical ex- practicals but do we have data enough how many colleges are there across india no we have nearly 400 colleges 350 or 360 odd colleges and many of them have got post graduate centers do we know in our own colleges how many of our students are belonging to what kind of prakriti we don't have the data so without data we cannot speak so what is the purpose you know what what are you trying to do then you know i hope you are, you are understanding what i'm trying to get at so this is a purpose the purpose is to find out on an individual or group basis which are the events which are happening right so the main area of concern in research are what diagnostic tools what are the things that we can focus of in research diagnostic tools therapeutic tools medical surgical panchakarma whatever whatever you want to talk it investigative tool screening tool now you tell me out of these four tools where is the focus of research in ayurveda we are more bothered about only therapeutic you know panchakarma shodhana shamana chikitsa so many of those kind of things where are the diagnostic tools in ayurveda why have we not developed them where are the investigative do, they, do we not have them we have the pravidha pariksha we have the shat vidha pariksha we have the dasha vidha pariksha where are the clinical researches on them have we developed a screening tool there are certain works a few works you know taila bindu pariksha is there so many other aspects are there why are we not working where is the focus you know this all comes back to the whole area and the whole you know fight that we have in ayurveda related to you know uh, the uh, clinical and non clinical uh, aspect if somebody takes something then it becomes a non clinical if somebody doesn't then it becomes a clinical so with that fight you know i don't know where we are heading towards we are doing a great disservice to the science so you tell me looking at this slide where is the focus of research in ayurveda are we giving our students enough matter or are we motivating them enough to direct them toward this area i don't think so so research is a teamwork research is a teamwork right so it's a collaboration we cannot work i cannot work single handedly it's impossible research is a teamwork it's a learning 
every day is a new learning and research right it requires skills we have to work together collaboration is must you know look at the way modern science progresses something uh, some research is done in some corner of america and sitting in india in every nook and corner of india in the newspaper it is on the front line in the front page the research is published whatever the findings may whether it is good or bad or, you know right or wrong damn that's not the criteria but the thing is it gets disseminated we don't have that in ayurveda in karnataka you know i am i'm i'm sitting right now in karnataka in hubli and in karnataka we have nearly 64 colleges out of 64 colleges i think about 40 of them have got post graduate centers and out of those 40 post graduate there is no collaboration between each college every 30 kilometers there is a new college every 50 kilometers there is a new college nobody knows what the other college is doing why why is this attitude there in our science why are we not talking to each other we claim you know everybody claims that what i am doing is correct i'll take you through those things so most important thing in research is we have to understand data all research you know is is stems from the fact that if you have good data you can do it. so what is data data is information it can be from graphs measurements whatever measurement we do whatever observations we do what are the facts what are the numbers what is quantity all this is called as data do we have these in in ayurveda yes ayurveda is full of data the samhitas are full of data quantities are there numbers are there facts are there observations are there measurements are given have we done enough to bring them into protocols that is what we are missing now the entire world is looking at evidence based medicine now there is a lot of debate you know my uh, my presentation will evoke a lot of uh, you know probably uh, strong reaction from some sections when you say oh, ayurveda cannot be evidence based medicine but what is evidence let us try to understand what is evidence based medicine it is a systematic approach to a clinical problem solving by the integration of best research evidence with clinical expertise and patient values now what is wrong in this there is nothing wrong in this right we need this samhitas are based on this the consensus explicit and judicious use of current best evidence in making decisions about the care of individual patients look at that current best evidence across india how many of us are treating am vata how many of us are treating sandhi vata what is the current best evidence why have we not compiled them why is there no direction for the students why are the students still learning from the samhita yes samhita learning is important but are we telling them this is what people have been using for the last 20 25 years this is the current best evidence and this is what gives result why are we not teaching them that this is evidence based medicine i don't know why ayurveda cannot fit into this definition and there are five steps of evidence based medicine the first step is ask a clinical question you know is 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 not our samhita based on this asking questions every chapter is a question charaka shushrata vag but they are they want us to ask questions ask a clinical question what is the second step acquire the best evidence third most important thing is appraise the evidence find out whether whatever you have found in the evidence is it correct get it evaluated get it scrutinized let other people look at it this is where the problem in ayurveda is we are not people who readily agree criticism we don't want to stand scrutiny because we say oh you don't understand what our science is then make them understand have we not understood modern science why can't they understand if we try if we try and sit across they will understand and the fourth thing is apply the evidence once you appraise then apply and that is not the end of it assess your performance whatever was existent about 5 years ago may change because time changes factors changes etiological factors changes can't we do this in ayurveda it can be done now why is it is important evidence based medicine is the integration of best research evidence with clinical expertise and patient values so it's called as a evidence based ebm triad what is the triad patient concerns where are we in ayurveda are we aware of these in ayurveda clinical expertise and base best research evidence that is ebm so it's called as a triad and if we are aware what are we doing about it that is a question i would like to ask where is the evidence there are some books but we need more and more we need additions you know we did our bams from 1989 to 1995 
what i studied what textbook of hutchinson's i studied is not the same today it has gone tremendous changes the presentation is different the printing is different there are so many charts numerable things yes that is the way science has to progress but look at the charaka samhita the sushil samhita they are still coming in the same old you know papers which are so fragile so brittle that if you you know handle them for about 10 15 times they tear why why can't we even improve the printing quality why can't we improve the even the page quality make it attractive for the students you know you have to create an interest that is very important now most important thing what is ebm not what is not that is you know e- e- evidence based medicine is definitely not what we have always done is cookbook medicine this is what we are doing in ayurveda i am sorry to say it is all cookbook medicine we are cooking data it's only a cost cutting trick and we are only running behind only randomized trials rct 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 no there are many other designs and that is why i thought that this is appropriate topic topic to you know to to talk evidence based medicine is tracking down the best external evidence with which to answer our clinical questions why can't we simple uh, simply accept this fact it is not cookbook medicine i am very sorry to say that most of our post graduate dissert- dissertations are all cooked i can tell you if you show me the data i can point out what data has been cooked it is not magic it is not rocket science it's a understanding of the data it's a understanding of the process and we have become experts in you know copy paste cut paste google which is wrong we are missing the whole point so what are the elements of a research design look at this we need a purpose statement then settings techniques what is the timeline what is the methodology what are the objects objections or objectives what are the measurements and what is the analysis method this is what comes under a research design purpose statement okay now what is the components of a research proposal so when you want to plan a research we have to understand this what is pico right if i ask you a question you know you if you know the answer please type it in the in the comment box pico how many of us know what is pico and how many of us are aware that your title should contain this pico your title of the dissertation should contain pico what is p what is i what is c what is o right p stands for population i stands for intervention st stands for comparator o stands for outcome how many of us are aware of these technical definitions eligibility criteria ethics approval very sorry i am very sorry to say most of our post graduate colleges the ethical review board the committee which sets are not aware of the process of ethical review majority of the colleges there are a few institutes which have you know which follow proper rules icmr guidelines whatever the guidelines are there but a majority of them are not aware it is just on paper how can you expect research to be of good standards how do you think that people will accept our papers who is the population of in- interest and most importantly is dependent and independent variables how many of us are aware of this dependent and independent variable so when you are selecting a topic when you are doing a research which is a dependent variable which is a independent variable so dependent variable and independent variable have to be understood and most important thing the next is primary and secondary outcome outcome i'll give an example right simple example i'll give you many of our dissertation you know uh, topics are evaluation of so and so in the management of osteoarthritis or evaluation of so and so in the management of prameha or madhumeha with special reference to diabetes mellitus now please tell me are you going to manage osteoarthritis is that your outcome what do you mean by managing osteoarthritis are you going to manage the entire disease within 30 days are you going to manage the uh, you know the erosion the uh, you know the uh, whatever the uh, reduction in joint space are you going to manage that is that your criteria will a 8 day course of basti reverse the entire process are you going to manage it is that your outcome no what is the primary outcome there the primary outcome is pain management you want to ensure that whatever the topic has been taken is enough within 8 days if you can give pain relief to the patient that is a primary outcome finish your work give that evidence that is primary outcome 
along with that secondary outcomes will be there what are the secondary we have to know what are those secondary outcomes quality of life improves appetite improves these are secondary outcomes in ayurveda we can argue oh these are but the anubandha and all those kind of things but please write it down unless we know our primary and secondary outcomes we cannot apply statistics and that is a sec that the next the sec next thing is there you please open up any dissertation work that has been submitted in any university across ayurveda in in india they will say that there are so many symptoms have been taken and they, you will see that all the t values and the p values are highly significant highly significant which is the primary outcome what have you decided as your primary outcome if i ask if somebody asks a question the 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 person who has done the research will not know and i'm very sorry to say that even most of the guides will not know so if you don't know your primary and secondary outcomes how are you going to do the research why can't we fix as a primary outcome have the achar is not fixed what symptoms you can treat if this symptom is there use this yoga if this uh, symptom is added then use this yoga have they not given those guidelines very beautifully they have given no if it is vata pradhana then use this if it is pitta pradhana then this if it is shula then this if it is shotha then this our acharyas are more intelligent than we are sampling and sample size sample size is something that i am absolutely unable to understand why and how did 30 become the you know sample size for a pg dissertation are we we are not even taking an or making an effort to tell the student how to calculate a sample size you know we are not telling them which means that they don't know they don't realize so if you don't know what is the number needed to treat what is the number needed to treat actual number actual to do the research in the correct world scenario what is the actual number needed to treat then what is the research and what is the research method you are teaching your students we we don't know these things sampling and sample size we say random random randomized randomly allocated allocated into groups you know we use these terms so loosely and then the study rational finer criteria feasibility innovative novel ethical reproducibility r stands for reproducibility whatever research you have done if somebody else does the same research they should get similar results are our studies fulfilling this criteria no how many research works have been done across india in post graduate centers thousands and thousands why is nobody aware of those things why are those medicines not coming out everybody claims a statistically highly significant result if that is the case then why are companies not preparing those medicine why are they not releasing them in the market why are we not using it why are our students not learning about those things so we have to think you know we have to you know really break our heads about these things we need to understand and define look at this what is type 1 error what is type 2 error how many of us how many of the guides you know i am very blunt and honest please excuse me if i sound very harsh but this is a fact based on 20 years of experience i am telling you i have interacted with many teachers and students type 1 and type 2 errors are majority of them don't know or they don't know the, the application of it what is the prevalence of an event known and unknown do we know how many of your population let us say i am from hubli right i am from karnataka in the city that i am staying or wherever you are staying do you know how many of them are actually suffering from grahani roga do you know how many of them are suffering from pandu as per ayurveda do you know how many of them are suffering from amvata we know we have the data of ulcerative colitis we have the data of crohn's disease we have the data of rheumatoid arthritis but we do not have data of ayurvedic diseases why prevalence of an event <coughs> prevalence of a proportion how much proportion what is the proportion of the population that is suffering everything is written so beautifully in harrisons in davidsons in hutchinsons in apa textbook of medicine we copy paste it we our, our dissertation title is sandhigata vata amavata pandu grahani and we write in the introduction and need for study the incidence and prevalence of this disease is so and so where is that data from is it ayurvedic data no where is that data why have we not generated that data do we know how many of them are actually suffering from fever this is a pandemic right the main presentation is kasa shwasa jwara you know shrama shwasa or uh, you know uh, whatever the symptoms are there why are we not generating the data how many of how many of them how many of us know what is the symptomatology what is the variability 
Ayurveda is full of variables. Dosha themselves are variable. Dhatus are variable. Rasa is variable. Gunas are variable. Nidana is variable. So, what are the variabilities in the presentation? Who has Vata Pradhan? Who has Pitta Pradhan? Who is having Vata Pradhan Agrani? Who is having Vata Pradhan Pandu? Where is this data? And we talk of, you know, international level research. I'm sorry. We don't qualify to be called as an international research. Probability level. Time factor. What is the time factor of your research? Within 30 days, can you manage diabetes mellitus? Are you going to manage th with 30 days? Within 90 days, are you going to manage and say, oh, we got statistically significant result. So now there is no need to take this medicine. You are free. Can you say that? So we need to know again, going back to the previous slide, what is the primary outcome and the secondary outcome? Practicability of it, application, that is what EBM means. Practicability. Is it practical? And most importantly, is it statistically significant or is it clinically significant? Please remember the studies which are statistically significant need not be clinically significant because statistical significance comes with numbers. But when you try to apply it to the real world population, clinically it may be insignificant. So please not even for a minute believe that all studies which are statistically highly significant are clinically significant also. We need to generate evidence for that. And that is why the various phases are there. Phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4, you know, phase 0 is also there. That is what, you know, now we are seeing vaccine being generated. Everybody is, you know, thinking that it is a magical uh, uh, phenomenon. You think it is so easy to develop a vaccine that will be released without testing and uh, uh, practicability and the time factor and the probability. Do you, don't you think that it needs to be validated? Even if we are putting out our Ayurvedic terminology, the Ayurvedic medicines, don't you think that it needs to be validated? Don't we have to give evidence? Why are we running away from sharing evidence? Why are we running away from publishing? Let other people, let people who are in the field ask questions, you answer them, you convince them, then they will start using it. The only thing that we say is, oh, you don't understand Ayurveda. No, that's a wrong argument. I don't believe that. Then look at this. Bioethical codes for human experimentation. How many of us, how many of our PG scholars and how many of our faculties are aware of this? Nuremberg Code of 1947, Helsinki Declaration. Have we actually read these things? Modified Helsinki of 1975, ICMR guidelines. How many of us have undergone, have read this? CIOMS and WHO guidelines. COPRA, that is Consumer Protection Act. Are we all aware of this? Because this has to be integrated in, because it is a present day scenario. When Sushruta wrote his Vishikhanu Pravesha Adhyaya, he says that you have to take the permission of a king, which means that he had to follow the law of the land. So we are, wherever we are staying, we have to follow the law of the land. Is it not mandatory? And this is where our ethic com ethical committee comes. Do you think that the ethical committee members are aware of these things? Do they ask the right questions? Are we able to give justification? In Ayurveda, I am talking in, in respect to Ayurveda. Now, exploratory research. How many of these are we doing in Ayurveda? Look at this. I am sure you can see the slide. Primary research and secondary research. Surveys and polls. How many surveys have we done in Ayurveda? Please tell me. Where is the data? Survey is the simplest form of generating data. Today online surveys are done. Myself and my wife, we did three surveys during the pandemic period. We generated huge amount of data. We have published it. We have submitted to the government of India. We have submitted to the Prime Minister. We have submitted to the Chief Minister of Karnataka. We even we did a survey of students who are undergoing online education in Ayurveda, the difficulties that they faced, and we have submitted that report and a recommendation to the VC of Rajivanda University of Health Sciences and the Dean of Faculty of Ayurveda in Rajivanda University of Health Sciences. Very easy now. We have got the tools. Why can't we do it? Interviews, one-to-one -one interviews, focus groups, observations. You observe a lot. Medicine is all about observation. Medicine is common sense. Unfortunately, common sense is not common. Online research, literature research. How many of us do literature research? Case study research. Now we are seeing people publishing case studies. That has to continue. You know, we are still in the infancy of research and we blame and we complain. Types of research. Look at this. From the point viewpoint of application, pure research in Ayurveda. Where is pure research in Ayurveda? You tell me. Say, Saiddhantika research. research. Fundamental research. We learn in our uh, research, types of research. Who does it? So who does, who does this kind of research? Right? We need research on dosha, dhatu, guna, mahabhutas, srotas. That is pure research. 
applied research then comes the applied research we have to do applications of these aspects that is what ayurveda is all about depending on the objectives descriptive research correlation research explanatory research then type of information i'll take you through that quantitative and qualitative research so there are so many aspects of this now data mining so i asked a question does this exist in ayurveda because we don't have data data mining is a practice of searching through large amounts of computerized data to find useful patterns or trends where is this data we don't have so we cannot da do data mining so data mining is a practice of searching through large amounts of computerized data to find useful patterns or trends we need to do this we need to develop the data now recommended for ayurveda how many of us have heard of this black box designed by who what is who say the study of traditional medicine can also be undertaken in a black box manner this means that the treatment and all of its components as delivered as they would be in the usual clinical situation so if who has recommended this why in the world are we not implementing this in post graduate departments in this type of study no component of the treatment package is isolated and studied independently so this is what tire which uh, the who is saying this is chikitsa sutra this allows the effectiveness of traditional medicine to be determined either within its own theoretical framework or within that of conventional what more clarity do you need who has already given this guideline black box design why are we not educating our faculty our post graduate scholars on this why are we running behind rcts why are we not doing black box design studies ask this question to yourself now what look at the types of research to become familiar with the what is the purpose to become familiar with a phenomena fundamental research to portray accurately the incidence distribution characteristics of a group or situation incidence distribution in your own city in our own cities have we done a study every city has got ayurved college why are they not initiating a survey to find out what is the kind of prakriti in the in their own population how much time will it take let it take one year two years three years do you think that modern science has progressed in just one single day look back at 1960s where they were and look at now within 60 years look at the leaps and bounds of you know the the advancement that they have gone through they are still evolving and they accept yes this was wrong we don't do that we don't know we don't know the incidence we don't know the distribution without distribution you cannot plan a research design you need those parameters to investigate relationship between variables this is the beauty of ayurveda relationship between variables there are two variables vata and shula pitta and shula kapha and shula very beautifully described to investigate relationship do vata pains actually increase at night show us the data yes acharyas have told us clinically we have seen it but please show us the data which kind of patients is it sandhi vata is it ama vata is it gastikata vata it is is it avruta vata where enumerate the list of diseases where you can say yes these are the kind of disease where you will find pain in the evening so you have to consider it as vata pradhana to test a hypothesis then comes testing the hypothesis so first we have to generate the hypothesis right without doing this we are giving the you know titles and you know research topics so we have to explore we have to describe we have to explain predict and then control so many aspects are there so research design can be explorative research and conclusive research conclusive research can be descriptive and causal research and again cross sectional and longitudinal i'm just giving you the ideas right i'm just taking you through these things so again a different uh, way of looking at it pre experimental true experimental quasi experimental and statistical see one short case study one group pre test post test static group so many varieties are there are we even aware of these things and we complain oh we cannot we cannot do research in ayurveda why it's because of our own ignorance it is because of our own ignorance that we are not able to do these things 
again types of research done qualitative and quantitative quantitative look at that experimental quasi experimental survey and correlation have you ever done a correlation study in ayurveda ethnography case study historical narrative so many varieties are there in design right even if all departments in postgraduate everybody is running behind only clinical study that is not the criteria so qualitative research methods again one on one interview focus groups case study record keeping documentation research cannot be done without documentation acharyas have maintained documentation if it was not written you would not be studying ayurveda they have noted they have you know codified everything they have noted down everything every occurrence they have noted down so many probabilities they have given for example in raja yakshma three symptoms six symptoms 11 symptoms how beautiful co- you know codification is there look at the rasa and the dosha combinations permutation and combination 64 combinations have been given how beautifully they have done it it's not a joke yes they were highly intelligent they had divya chakshu gnana chakshu whatever but have they not done it are we not intelligent can we not raise up to their standards process of observation this is what is missing we don't observe we are not we are no longer teaching our students to observe you observe a lot by you know you learn a lot by observing you know i come from the department of shalya tantra in in modern surgery there is a one uh, beautiful quotation he say it says see one do one teach one see one which means that see one procedure when you see one uh, uh, operative procedure you should be able to do one procedure which means that your observation should be so keen that you are able to do the procedure and once you have seen it properly and done it properly then you should be ready to teach teach one are we evolving this kind of a interest and motivation in our students we are sitting in our opd and talking about prakriti without a live patient how is it possible quantitative research is a cornerstone of evidence based risk practice it provides the knowledge for practice in a way that is measurable and can be replicated measurable you have to measure it that is why it's called as quantitative it uses measurement to determine the effectiveness of an intervention or the relationship seen among variables with a certain level of confidence you know when patients come to us today they ask this same question sir what is the guarantee what is the confidence level are we confident we t- can we tell them within one week within 15 days within one month this is the amount of relief you will get how confident are you certain level of confidence numbers are ambiguous and identify truths you know universally recognized way they will identify truth numbers cannot lie you know so what is the purpose of studies what is the difference between quantitative and qualitative quantitative is a declarative statement that identifies the type of relationship whereas a qualitative is a statement that the intent of the study is to explore and understand some phenomenon that is the main difference right so i'll not go through the each uh, uh, you know uh, the thing that is written but that is the main difference purpose of the study descriptive designs experimental designs so many designs are there case studies and epidemiology we don't know epidemi- you look at epidemiology this is a pandemic it requires epidemiology where is ayurveda in epidemiology you tell me where is ayurveda does ayurveda feature anywhere in the national uh, health programs do we know tuberculosis leprosy you know we say kushta ek kushta maha kushta this kushta that kushta where are we because we have not done those studies we don't have data we just claim oh it is all written there 5000 years ago everything was written you know about two years back the nobel peace prize was given to a to a person who described the circadian rhythm and everybody in ayurveda started uh, arguing oh this is already described in ayurveda yes if it was described why didn't we tell and why didn't we win the nobel prize why do we complain always without data without anything we just complain oh it's already there it's already there where is it why did we not tell why are we not telling people right so there are so many things that we have to come come across then look at these kind of studies longitudinal studies have we ever done you please show me a longitudinal study in in ayurveda examines changes within individuals over a time period provides a developmental analysis we don't do these studies it takes a long time 
possibility of practice effects cannot exam yes there are advantages there are dis but modern science has followed you know heart studies they have followed people for 20 years 25 years 50 years yes there will be dropped out dropouts but can't we do that can't we at least initiate one study cross sectional study examines changes between participants of different ages at the same point in time in you know in ayurveda when you read the samhita when you read the uh, the the diseases each disease is described in a separate chapter the patient sitting in front of you is he one chapter by one chapter no he will come to you with osteoarthritis along with that he has got hypothyroidism he has got high blood pressure and he is a uncontrolled diabetic patient you show me one chapter where everything is written you get a 50 year old patient you get a 60 year old patient you get a 40 year old patient you get a 20 year old patient with these manifestations how are you going to know who is who what is what those who are good enough and those who are intelligent enough to understand they will understand but should we not teach our students about these things so we have to do cross sectional so sequential examines changes within individuals over time examines changes between participants of different ages at same point in time now now we in the pandemic in the covid pandemic we have got mild symptoms moderate symptoms severe symptoms icu related so many symptoms and asymptomatic do we have the ayurvedic data on the lakshanas age wise 0 to 10 10 to 15 15 to 20 whatever we have to initiate you know if you are not done at least we have to start somewhere philosophical assumptions look at this ayurveda is full of this qualitative research ontology what is the reality multiple realities subjectivity of reality what does one person understand charaka understands this shushruta understands this this is what he says but what is the reality understanding the phenomenon from multiple perspective by capturing subjective views and experiences catch hold of all the experts in ayurveda in one uh, concept get their opinion get their opinions even today we are arguing about cloma even today we are arguing about sira dhamani nadi srotas hrudaya sthana ojas you know apara ojas para ojas why why are we not able to say okay 1 2 3 4 5 these are the possible conclusions let us not get into complications students are also learning same thing everything is same thing textbooks are written and written and written textbooks are nothing but compilation works today there is no real meaning epistemology knowledge close interaction between the knower and the known axiology value and beliefs influence actions taken value and belief discussing your background beliefs and biases and how they influence the research process because bias is a very integral portion of research if we have to rule out bias what do what does one person believe what are his values why is he practicing that way what is the outcome we have to do such kind of research literature review you know may use sources that are biased does not define what so literature review is being done but yes we have to do lot of research literature systematic review probably doesn't uh, you know you know it's not not many of this is to be we cannot do this because there is no data meta analysis i think it's almost non existent in ayurveda are we aware of these things are our teachers the universities the faculties and the people who are setting the syllabus and the guidelines are they aware of these things that these are the shortcomings i am trying to highlight you know my topic is need for reforms and to sh- you know i am trying to substantiate why reforms are needed because this things are not there these are not there yes the strength of evidence is there modern science says case report is a single case so it has got least evidence whereas clinical study has got the highest but let us start modern science started like that case study case report case series correlation cross sectional case control cohort interventional we can re- we can reach there but let us start let us scrutinize let there be a a forum where we can put forth and everybody starts discussing about these things so why write a systemic review evidence based care utilizes available literature to guide clinical decision making process multiple studies are taken 10 20 50 100 studies are taken and they are studied and they are analyzed so there is it's not actual study being done it is a study of the studies which are done that is called as a systematic review it's a review process and then they arrive okay this found this this found this we need to do the we need to reach there 
so from a scholar to researcher community of practice this is what we have to do star faculty mutual research interest and students that interaction between faculty and student is very important right what other studies can be done correlation studies regression analysis association studies surveys you know i can go on and on there are so many research designs so many things which can be done we are not doing them now what is missing in our science just to summarize you know i'll tell you these are things that we don't have demographic data is what we don't have parameter to do any statistical test to do any research design we need to have a parameter population characteristics mean etc what is a mean vata pradhana prakriti vata pitta pradhana vata pitta kapha you know vata pradhana pitta madhyama kapha avar whatever we can define those title but we need data health profile and risk factors from an ayurvedic perspective have we studied the trisutra ayurveda hetu linga aushad hetu health profile environmental factors and socio economic aspect morbidity mortality fertility rates scales of measurement this is something which is in ayurveda we are lacking because we many people argue oh, ayurveda cannot be objective everything is subjective but yes can we can't we develop scales which are internationally accepted or at least accepted across india i told you in karnataka only we have got 60 colleges in post graduate level whenever there is a dissertation synopsis being uh, uh, you know submitted let us say out of these 60 colleges in 10 colleges there is a one study on sandivata or amvata or grahani being taken everybody's criteria will be different assessment criteria scales are different so which is standard how to know which is and everybody claims statistically highly significant result 80% 90 p less than 0.001 how are we going to believe these things estimates health levels health trends and health resources what are the health trends emerging trends are we in tune with what the society wants what are the health trends are we able to address those issues epidemiological facts interpretation of tests observation and everybody has got their own interpretation when you get a you know blood test x ray whatever we interpret there are many experts in ayurveda who interpret oh this is vata this is pitta this is that dhatu this is dhatva agni this is srotas where is that knowledge why are we not publishing it why are we not disseminating that knowledge so that everybody starts speaking the same language decisions on diagnosis prognosis and therapy based on probability we can give 1 2 3 if you use this line of treatment this is the probability of success 70% probability 25% probability and we need health workers who are primary data generators i'm sorry to say it's a fact that a majority of ayurvedic doctors practice allopathy how can they generate data for ayurveda then they forget ayurveda they forget dosha dhatu mala they forget the dosha dhatu mala vriddhikshay lakshana they forget aam lakshana they forget srotas lakshana <coughs> how can they generate data for us because they are practicing everywhere they don't have a protocol they don't have any you know uh, any data generating sheet and lastly publications now there is a increasing trend to publish publish or perish we need to promote we need to bring up the standards we need to encourage people to publish you know some recognition some credit system when you go to western countries in mbbs in in allopathic science or any other systems of medicines there is something called as a credit systems if you do a cme you get a credit marks are given to you for example now you are listening to this uh, live session if this was somewhere in uh, in western country in america or anywhere they would have said if you attend this session you will be getting you know two credits three credits which means that there is a professional development that's why these are called as cmes continuing medical education professional continue professional development courses you learn something we learn something and that has to be valued and that has to be given credit some certificate you know some marks so that tomorrow if there is a criteria to select between two people then somebody can tell up you know get up and show look here this is what i have achieved i have attended so many webinars this is my understanding and you can test my knowledge on that we are not bothered 
in ayurveda you know we are bothered only behind after 5 years you become a reader after 10 years you become a professor no merit in government colleges in centrally run institutes yes that is applied but what about other colleges you know i was a visiting professor at two universities at london from 2002 to 2008 during one of my visit i happened to visit king's college of london and there i met i was interested in doing a phd at that institute so i wrote to that person in charge of life sciences professor hutton i still remember his name and you know i can still recall his face so i wrote to him i said look i would like to come and uh, talk to you discuss the possibility of uh, you know conducting some research he was very straight forward he said okay why don't you come down so we fixed an appointment we went i went there and i introduced look i am so and so and then i am having so much of years of experience now i am professor he asked me are you a professor how old are you i said uh, you know i have i have completed 10 years of my teaching experience so therefore i am a professor he said wow that's great i have been teaching for the last 40 years and i am still not a professor that was his response and i felt so ashamed right and at that point in time i am talking of about 6 uh, 7 years back at that point in time he took me uh, in his uh, in his uh, you know uh, department and there were people non ayurvedic people from sri lanka who were working on medhya gana of charaka they were doing animal experimentation on medhya gana of charaka non ayurvedic people in kings college london and he was the guide i was stunned amazed what are we doing we are fighting we are you know we are we are just cribbing we are not aware we are not giving the world view to the students there is so many things that we need to learn you know so why do we need this why why should we do all these kind of things it's a guide for medical care services you know we say ayurveda is a holistic science it's a bind body spirit uh, science so we need a guide for medical care services right we need to be accepted in the society it can become a tool for research it is a measure of the health status of a community measure of a health status of a community if we have to be useful to the community we have to do something right identifies health problems and therefore you can justify why ayurveda can be given identifies the health needs even before something comes why can't we promote helps a scientific basis recording collection compilation presentation analysis continued again why do we need this for comparing health status between individual to individual society to society hospital to hospital community to community district to district state to state and country to country we need to go at that level we need to discuss we need to have platforms so therefore for planning and health administration for impact and failure assessment why a particular treatment failed have our acharyas not told us that some diseases are sukha sadhya yapya krutra sadhya asadhya they only tell us right so there will be failures why can't we accept it why do we always blame the patient the system or somebody else why can't we take the blame and say yes i did wrong internal review right we need that we need to sit across you please tell me in many ayurvedic hospitals in how many ayurvedic hospitals there is something called as a clinical audit do we do clinical audit what is a clinical audit every month or every week or every 15 days we sit every doctor sits there is a medical director who sits and reviews okay what treatment was given why this patient did not recover what happened what went wrong why did this patient die what is the outcome what is the positive what is the negative this is called as clinical audit how many of our hospitals do it we are afraid to put forth our data and we always find excuses to justify our data be straight forward right it is a internal review it is a clinical audit we need that and that is not existing in ayurveda so what are we doing in the name of research in ayurveda majority is so called research so called research we use the term research for partial fulfillment of the completion of the post graduate level degree partial fulfillment so partial interest for the teacher also for the school researcher also therefore it is so called research this i am talking based on 20 years of experience only in pg earlier now in ug colleges as well 
and i'm sorry to say a majority don't have any idea of research process or statistics this is a fact you can argue with me i'll give you examples no idea of research design that's what i told you all these data that i presented please go back and read are you aware of these things what are the textbooks that we follow we don't read in my own college in in, in koppal i tell the students there are so many books available in modern research design nobody reads that they only want syllabus based textbooks that's all right that is not the criteria you have to read from the original text original you know the the book just to give an example the original textbook of anatomy is grey's anatomy right on that many textbooks are written chaurasia and everything notes are made so what are those those are 50% of the matter which are there in grey's anatomy is there in other textbooks so 50% matter is condensed as a student what does our student do they condense they make notes on these notes so our knowledge is only 25% you are not reading from the original text so if you don't read research design textbooks if you don't read statistical textbook if you don't read all these books original book how are you really going to be and so therefore i told you research is a passionate thing you have to you know you cannot force somebody to be a researcher but we have to motivate them it is a duty of the teacher but unfortunately majority of the teachers i am using the word majority because there are very beautiful and very efficient and professional teachers in ayurveda that i know who are great motivators in the field of research but a vast majority of them are not motivated themselves but they are guides they have got dissertations under them we don't have a template unfortunate this is a very unfortunate thing i'll i can tell you the example from my state i don't know what is happening in your state you are the best person to give me the feedback we come under rajiv gandhi university of health sciences and we have got 16 branches of post graduate departments 16 divisions in ayurveda don't you think that every department needs a separate synopsis template is it not we require separate templates for every process we don't have that everybody synopsis is different why why can't we develop a simple template for each and every for dravidana department this is how you have to present for rashastra this is how you have to present this is should be your focus these are the criteria nobody asks us databases now ayush dhara so many other databases are knowledge repositories are to be there tkdl is there collaboration again collaboration publications sadly no idea of ethics and plagiarism now it is coming plagiarism etc otherwise we are very we we feel you know we use these details very easily and student t test was is still considered as gold standard what is research in ayurveda t test please get out of that phenomenon unscientific grouping in research we do most unscientific groups institutional ethics board why i talk about that we complain a lot we only raise complaints right so you may question now a question because after listening to all these things can we design a research based on ayurveda principles my answer is yes can we try to work out the different variables as per ayurveda yes whatever your questions are my answer will be yes and lastly now my question is have we tried have we tried and people say that oh ayurveda cannot be researched based on modern protocols modern research that is wrong because we have not understood the concept clearly of research what is ebm individual patient concerns what is ayurveda purusham purusham viksha is it not the same phenomenon so many different variables are there can we work out yes it can be done but we have not sat down we have not you know sat down and we have not done this work now are we sticking to the basic principles of ayurveda and research the answer is no i am sorry to say no we have completely and very conveniently forgotten the trisutra ayurveda he tulinga ushada and we complain that modern methods cannot be adopted into ayurveda without even trying to understand them we are trying to fit in something you are we are trying to fit in a square shape in a round hole it will not fit but they can coexist together we can do that does research in ayurveda have to follow modern methods 
my answer is yes and no yes there is nothing wrong in adopting the concepts why no because we can develop our own designs the question is who and how who should do it how it is to be done when it is to be done why it is to be done where it is to be done so many questions when i can understand this why can't the authorities why can't the people who frame the syllabus why can't the people who you know who run this ayurveda why can't they do that why are they not inviting people to sit and uh, talk to this process i'm very sorry you know again i'll i'll keep on saying sorry because i'm very blunt because this is what i have seen not happening in ayurveda so what are the proposals this is what i think needs to be done urgent needs we need to set up a central zonal regional ayurveda research centers this is not existent now every regional center has to report to zonal center every zone has to report to a central system develop protocols templates for every disease many doctors many institutes have done but there is no uniformity there is no you know uniform or what you call as universal approval let us sit down let us work it out let us take one year but let us start the process let us start generating demographic data to determine population characteristics let us link ayurveda colleges to collaborate data we are not linking ayurveda colleges we don't know what each one is doing promote publishing of data make research and biostatistics a profession in ayurveda you can be a research and ayur biostatistics ayurvedic researcher and biostatistician how many of the ayurveda colleges have hired a full time qualified biostatistician students only go to them with their data with their master chart and now with this spss uh, software which is there in statistics package they go it and give it to them and they do the result and then they give the report back and they charge money they are not involved in research designing they are not involved in planning the data nothing we have to set up task forces it's a big task we have to break it up into different tasks and we have to develop task forces involve the best of minds but based on merit you know no no popularity no corruption i know you you know me i'll pat your back you pat my back this is what is holding ayurveda back now we need to do a lot of things we need to have the best of minds to work modern science has not reached there just by itself there are the best of minds yes we can agree we can agree to disagree on many points but we need them we need the best of minds without any bias without any you know uh, hindrances blockages these are the urgent needs what needs to change is our attitude towards research this is the first criteria research is a full time job that's why it's called as a scientific temper please listen to talks of uh, apj abdul kalam research is a full time job it's not a part time job we need to identify people who are really interested and put them there and they have to do the job for us we need to have intensive training we need faculties and interested people understand the concepts of research and biostatistics and we need to have a vision where will ayurveda be in the next 5 years 10 years that vision is important there has to be a pathway there has to be regulations and most importantly the fear process or oh, if you don't listen to me i'll fail you in the exam you will not get your pg degree you will not get your phd how much subservient we have become to our guides and professors and departments is it not shameful we are professionals they are doctors for god's sake they are doctors they have a family they are married they have children they have come for post graduate studies they have come for phd and you treat them like your servants and they do that because they know that if they don't do that they cannot pass how low can a individual go patriarchal mindset this is what is hurting ayurveda power corridors and lastly follow the equator guidelines for those of you who, know, who don't know please go to google and type equator network if you open that if you are planning your research work you it will take you through a step by step process and it will tell you what are the protocols you need to identify how should your synopsis be what are the checklist how can you publish because unless you follow that the peer reviewed journals will not accept your paper 
your article or whatever your write up is so guidelines are there every tool is available we are not aware of those things now honestly let us try to understand why ayurveda is being treated the way it is in the present context of the pandemic after listening to all these things can we be honest and tell that ayurveda i mean don't you think that certain people are justified in the way they ask questions to ayurveda we in ayurveda we can get angry yes we have got every right to get angry because they don't understand but have do we have the data when somebody asks questions why are we not giving them data look this is it please study please scrutinize it do a peer review of this data and then come back to me i am pretty confident that my data is robust this is data integrity we don't do that you know we have to ask these hard questions to ourselves we have to be open to scrutiny then only we can progress now you tell me after listening to all the discussions that i have put forth do you not feel that it is time to change our attitude towards research do you not feel that it is time that we change the way research is being done in ayurveda ask these questions to yourself you may differ with me we can argue we can debate we can you know put forth our ideas but don't you feel that the whole idea of how research should be done has to change drastically and therefore i took my topic and at the end i want to conclude that it is high time for reforms in ayurveda research perspectives we need to do reforms if not now we will suffer for a very long time to come it's very high time now right so this is what i i just gave you a you know a, a birds eye view of what actual research process is how many designs are there what statistical data we need to have and so many other things which are there i tried to cover up it's almost 1 hour and 8 minutes that i have taken and uh, this is where i rest my case and uh, i plead that i request all of you to sincerely think about these matters take up this level at your institutional level at your level you know if you want my help in any way please feel free to contact me you can get my details from dr kishore or you can write to me if you want any help from my end i'll try to pitch in and i'll try to connect you to people if i don't know something i'll connect you to people who know it but this has to start happening every college every area every you know wherever i go i always make it a point to address the students and the faculty and my only request is let us do some multi centric studies let us do some collaborative work many of the teachers many of the principals they say yes but they conveniently forget after that you know so there are so many things that we need to we need to expose our students to so many things we don't teach our students the better you know the for example the swastha purusha lakshana samadosha samagnishta samadhatu malakre the second line we have conveniently forgot in our clinical practice prasanna atmendriya manaha swastha itte vidiyate who who teaches them the the psychological counseling who teaches our students how to interact with the patient clinical expertise clinical skill development is very 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 poor in ayurveda i am very sorry to say we need to develop this attitude we need to motivate our students we need to reform the entire structure look at our syllabus the way our syllabus is framed itself is sometimes very you know i am from shalya and in the fourth year bms syllabus there is a head and neck surgery and chest surgery. you please tell me what is the need to teach head and neck surgery and chest injuries and surgery to a bms student why do we need these things in the syllabus it's not required you know after bms what is expected of him is what we have to teach him today you please tell me do any of our doctors treat head and neck injuries no because 108 or whichever the ambulance services are there is available they come and they take to a specialized hospital we have to just refer them look at the way questions are asked in the examinations explain bagandara types and the chikitsa sutra as per charaka sushruta whatever we don't we are not giving them real life situation cases in london when i used to teach shalya i had to give them a half page case study a 33 year old person came with bleeding per rectum piercing mass so and so he was of this prakriti his lifestyle is so much this is what he eats and then the questions which means that the student has to think case to case basis we are not teaching that we are only making mechanical students out of our students 
dummy cases we are uh, we are you know promoting them to write dummy cases so how dummy cases and the, again in research they will add dummy cases that is why i told you cooking up of the cases they have seen five cases they will cook the data of 20 cases otherwise the guide will get upset and the university will not accept it you tell me has any dissertation work been rejected till today in any of the universities no so there are many questions that we need to ask you know our syllabus has to be changed our attitude has to change our training mentality has to change our approach has to change training teaching methodology has to change so that is why i think that it is very high time for reforms there is huge potential provided your basics are strong you know we have to reform ourselves it is very high time you know we are i am very passionate about ayurveda right this is something which we, we are not ex, you know ayurveda is not existing because of us we are existing because of ayurveda we are alive because of ayurveda if we change that attitude then things will fall into perspective so therefore ayurveda research perspectives have to change it is very high time that we have to reform it and i hope that you uh, enjoyed the presentation as much as i did